All right, good morning, I guess it still is. It's about 11 o'clock here in Billings, Montana. My name is Rebecca Langman, and I'm an interior designer and owner of Revision Custom Home Design. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, today's project is a little different than what I've been working on uh, previously in this week. If you've caught my previous live streams, I was working on a remodel project. Well, this one today is new construction. So this is a client who was referred to me. I love referral clients. Uh, don't even know what part of Montana this person is in, honestly. Um, um, but it's a contractor that I've worked with. He's got projects in a few locations. He told his friend, and now his friend is having me draw up plans for a new construction home that he's going to build. And so let's hop right in. Basically, when I work with clients, um, it can be pretty easy peasy. Uh, I was sent a short little email. There's about a paragraph here of text, very small text, but text. And then I have a scribble here. Oh, I'll go like that. Um, so you can see it's something that was found on the internet. It was edited. It's been scribbled on. Uh, it's been mirrored. So it's been flipped. Um, and then, of course, the notes that go with it. So that's what I've got to work with. I'm going to start drawing up this plan and we'll see where we end up. Um, so we're shooting for about 1,600 to 1,800 square feet on the main floor uh, with a master suite and two other bedrooms. So not a huge house, but... Um, by no means is that an issue. I love working on the smaller houses. I was just telling someone the other day, I actually really like squeezing a plan, which sounds weird, but I do. I like seeing exactly where I can find space to really make the most efficient use of the space. You know, I see all these big houses and more power to them, yay, but not everyone needs that. And like my house here, what, 1,400 square feet, I think, on the main floor, if that, um, it works. We can fit our family in. So anywho, uh, enough of the, <laughs> I don't know, theorizing or whatever. We're just going to hop right in here. So um, as always, I'm using Chief Architect. I use Premier X12 as the version. Um, I think they've just upgraded X13, but eh, we'll get there. All right. So we're going to start out here. And the first thing I do is go around the perimeter. Uh, and this actually, usually I don't have dimensions. This one, I at least have sort of ballpark dimensions but on this printed out version they are very blurry so all right hang on just a second here um normally i don't hop into my email like this but there we go mm -hmm. yeah i really can't even on the version he sent me when I zoom in, oh yeah, because I'm mirrored also. <laughs> so not only are they blurry and not scaled very well, they are backwards. They've literally mirrored the plan. Okay, so the good news is I can figure most of this stuff out. But anyway, good to know. All right, so the first step is always using my exterior wall tool. Um, like I said, the client's already flipped the plan the direction that they want. Now, he made a comment in his notes, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off task here. The front door will actually be facing the back of the property, and the back of the house will be facing the front of the property. Um, just because of the way they're curving the driveway, they've got lots of land. So I'm almost wondering, normally I would draw the front door down at the bottom of the plan. That's kind of standard. I almost wonder if I should just flip it like that and draw it that way, if that's where the front door is going to be. But no, I'll draw it the other way, and then we can always we can always rotate it if we if we decide we need to. Plus the plot plan, I can draw on there. It won't matter if the door's at the bottom or the top because the plan will just wrap around that. So, anywho, sorry tangents. My caffeine. I've only had you know a third of my soda so far. All right, so I'm just gonna start over here. We're gonna come on over here. I've got a big long wall. And we've got a big long wall here. Little jog, medium jog. About two thirds. Little jog. Out here we've got garage. And that actually comes in just a little ways over out down 
Okay, so totally haphazard, not even, yeah. And obviously dimensionally we are way off. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of start to wiggle around. Let's see here. The garage. We start with that. And he only has six by a 16 by 8 and a 10 by 8 door. So let's, I usually don't throw the doors in this quickly, but I'm just trying to double check here the sizes that we're doing. Um, so we're going to make that a 10 foot wide door. And then we're going to do a 16 foot wide door here. Generally, when I'm doing these, we'll start out two foot from the corner. We'll do about two foot here. And then we'll do two foot there. Okay. So right now that puts our garage. Hold on. I'm just going to quick change this wall from a siding six to an interior six. And all that means is even though it's framed the same, it just doesn't have siding on one side, obviously. Um, so right now, if I label this as garage, first of all, it doesn't, um, that excludes it from the total living space. So it drops our total living square footage down, but it also gives me these dimensions and allows me to see what I've got going on here. Um, typically for a garage, we don't want the depth to be any less than about I know 20 foot's out there honestly out here in Montana especially with all the extended cab pickup trucks 22 is kind of the minimum so I'm going to start with 22 we can always go back later um and adjust that but that gives us a starting point okay so then the other thing that I always like to do um I like my exterior dimensions to be even numbers, two foot increments. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, no framer in their right mind wants to go out on a job site and cut a board that is 16 inches and three quarters every single time for the length of a wall. Not going to do it. Um, <laughs> so you're paying labor, you're paying for kind of frustration, but also lumber comes in two foot increments generally. Um, you know, the nominal measurements of lumber are two foot increments. And so why would you design something that intentionally throws away nine inches, two inches, whatever, when you could just have that square footage, you know, you're, you're, you, you're buying the material no matter what, you might as well use it. All right. So master bedroom. Uh, that looks about like a 16, we'll say. Okay, so for that, seven, twelve, right, twenty maybe. So we'll see what happens if. Oh, that's let's try twenty six. Um, so where I'm coming up with these measurements, since I don't have actual dimensions on these room, the, the version that was sent to me, like I said, had the blurry numbers, is just looking at what's here in the space and knowing what average dimensions are for things. So I know that my bathroom is approximately 12 feet wide because I have a stand-up shower that's generally 5 feet wide, and then I have a tub zone, uh, which looks to be about 7 feet wide. Um, so I know that my master bath is approximately... Um, 12 foot maybe like 12 foot 6 but so I'm actually going to come over here um, once I start to get the exterior walls sometimes to help my interior walls I will start to map out um, kind of my interiors so that way you can see where some of these measurements are coming from now this is not so this is probably only about maybe 6 foot here like that
And that might be longer than that, so. Because that only makes it a 14-foot bedroom, and I think this, this bedroom actually looks quite a bit longer than that. So let's jump this up to 18-foot for right now. Okay. So I don't need to know that measurement. But I do want to know this. Let's make it an even... 26 foot. Okay. Then our covered front porch area, which is actually the back porch area. It looks like we have about... 6, 12, 18 maybe? We'll try 18 for now. Let's see where that puts us. I'm going to move this dimension line. Then we have a bedroom. I'm going to guess 14 foot. And then that puts us at 34 there. So now if that is the actual footprint, um, the auto calculated living space right now is 1538. Uh, like I said, the client was hoping to keep the main floor between 16 and 1800. So yay, <laughs> first of all. Um, but now we have to go back in here and see if everything fits that we expected to fit. And I'm already seeing one... Uh, offset that's not quite right so um this space right over here definitely needs to be a bit wider than it currently is so what i think it is is that i've got my garage offset by too much um meaning i need to scoot this over so let's let's do about four feet different so we're going to bump that up to 20 feet and then bump it back down to 16 foot and then move the interior wall so I think that's probably a little closer there. And then we're going to start to throw in a few more interior walls. So we'll bring this across. And again, this room is not quite the right size. So it might mean that I have to push this back in just a little ways further. So let's make that 28. Um, where we'll have to find out, though, is we've got a kitchen and dining right next to each other. We need to make sure we've got enough space for that. So actually, because that room is the correct size or it looks very close to it. But I'm worried that this front to back here is a little too much. So let's make this 20. I always hate to make things too big, but you got to make things big enough. Um, so that gave us another couple feet there. So let, if we were to look at our interior dimension here, that's leaving us with just about 19 feet. So that could give us a pretty decent kitchen dining. So now I'm assuming the reason they said the main entrance will be even though technically down here is the front door, they said the main entrance will be off the back. Coming in here to this kitchen living space, you know, coming up to this covered deck and entering there. Looks like sliders probably. All right. So over here. We will have an interior wall. See, now this bedroom is sticking out forward a ways, which that's definitely too much. So let's drop this down to say, we'll do 14 for now, but that's a very deep recess there. I, I'm not liking that. Something's not quite adding up there. might end up having to go wider so let's do 20 foot
and that still leaves us under that 1800 mark so far so we're getting closer um let's just keep plugging away at these interior walls and that'll tell us where we need to be so over here somewhere around here why would you do a walk-in closet i don't like that No, okay, whatever. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> okay. So over here we've got a bathroom, another bedroom. Kind of a little hallway zone. Yeah, that bedroom is way bigger than the other one. I don't like that. But there's really no reason for it. Like, that bedroom doesn't have to be that big. Because right now, we've got this. So this is um, bedroom three. This is bedroom two. This is master bedroom. Okay, so right now, master bedroom is 15 by 19. That's very good sized. Um, this bedroom over here is 12, eight by nine, 10, which is not good sized. Um, really anything smaller than 10 by 10 you can't it's very it becomes very difficult to fit even like a twin bed and a dresser in there um, and then this bedroom up front here right now it's saying it's 15 by 14 um but we will be carving a closet out of that and that's the problem with bedroom number three is we have to carve a closet out of there um yeah i'm not liking this i this needs to be less this needs to be 12 but first of all um and then over here we need to get in a bathroom into this space so i've got that at seven feet wide because the way they had that bathroom laid out um uh, Okay, so now I'm just quick throwing in those basic templates. Now, we don't need... Okay, we need the bedroom to be bigger and we need to add in a closet. So, um, so far this wall is kind of arbitrary. The size of this bathroom, we can actually widen it and we can actually shrink it down because the original plan called for a closet here. I'm thinking do, 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 do. okay I'm gonna extend this wall down 
we're going to do a doorway. Um, I want to make sure my doorway is, well, they want to do three foot doors on the main floor. I'm actually going to make this three foot six um, as a doorway, kind of into this little ante room here, hallway, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm not going to do the closet over here like they wanted or like, well, like I said, he just found a plan on the internet and told me to have at it. So I'm changing it because it needs to be. What I'd like to do is Okay, so I'm going to scooch this over. I don't want it all the way. Um, because we still need a little space for like a linen closet behind the door there. Um, again, making sure this is a 36 inch door, change the direction of the swing properly. Okay. Okay. So that door needs a bit or that bedroom needs a door. This bedroom needs a door. Um, and then we need to shrink this down so that we can get our closet in. Now, closets need to be a minimum of two foot one deep. So let's see. Now that drops my bedroom though to nine six and I... Yeah, do not like that. But this one's really big, and there's really no need for it to be this big. Well, then I gotta get a closet in there before I start making too many changes. But I think. Okay, so even if that ends up being my closet, this bedroom still just shy of 13 feet, just shy of 12 feet. That's actually pretty comfortable. Um, let's change this door swing back. And then... So let's make this a six foot door. Down here, we'll leave this as two five foot doors because you want to have as much access as possible. So that's a good size bedroom. I don't mind the little jog there. It makes for a really good spot for the linen right there. I'm just going to mark this the shelf. So this is a good size bathroom. Oh, we don't need to. Yeah, very comfortable. Um, and if the whole point of the three foot doors is kind of aging in place or, you know, um, being aware of long term for the house, having this little bit wider space in the middle is actually going to be really comfortable. So we've got some extra space out here in this little ante room or hallway. 
I'm still not convinced that this bedroom is the right size, though. I feel like that should be larger. I mean, unless they're not using it as a bedroom, unless it's only a guest room, unless it's more of like an office. Um, not entirely convinced. Yeah, this hallway is kind of wider than... Yeah, there's no reason for the hallway to be that narrow or that wide if it doesn't need to be. So let's scooch this over just a little ways. Let's see what that puts us at. Four foot eight. So that's actually still let's do let's drop it down to four foot six. There we go. That still fits comfortably. That still fits comfortably. We've got it, it extends our linen by a bit. And I'd rather have extra countertop space in the bathroom than not. So I'm going to enlarge that. There we go. So now we have, um, why is that middle one? We have a 30 inch wide middle cabinet with doors underneath. And then the two side ones will be drawer bases um, at 18 inches wide. So you've got tons of storage. Um, you got your shelf and that could either be open shelving or it could be an enclosed full height cabinet, whichever the client wants. But that bathroom makes sense. Um, I don't know that I can shrink it down anymore though. Um, cause I don't want to take too much more out of this room, but the only way that I could take any more space out of that room I mean, maybe because see, we're, we just need six more inches. Yeah. Maybe I can do this. Nope. Three, four, five, six. No, actually, we don't even need to do that. And that's cutting it tight. Let's go over one inch here. There we go. And sometimes it is just, you know, Inches and inches, little bits by bits. Um, my mouse, uh, if I use the keyboard, uh, I, my arrow key lets me go one inch at a time. So I'm just doing everything in six inch increments here. And then this wall, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now that bedroom is 10 by 13. It has a standard size closet. We'll scooch the door over just a little bit so there's not those dead corners. Although, actually, let's do this. Let's give ourselves a little linen closet from the hall. And then I always show closet doors mostly closed instead of open like bedroom doors because closet doors aren't going to be left open all the time, whereas bedroom doors quite often are um, or other rooms. So this gives us a little more, it, it's just a little more accurate for being able to look at the traffic flow of a space. Um, So there we got our bedroom up to 10. I'm much happier now. Um, so 10 by 13 and 11 by almost 13. So this bedroom's only a tiny bit bigger than that. Um, it does have the larger closet, of course, but that's okay. 
and then we've got our nice bath um okay so now we've got to just double check make sure so now that we kind of we figured out that wing we're good we're good we're good this middle zone here and i'm gonna oh, real quick basically we're just closing that off um i'll point it out to the clients if they want to do like a little inset shelf or something they can but that's yeah anyway um so now we've got this space over here i'm using my railing tool because we have a staircase that goes down to a basement my room divider tool that i like to call my invisible wall so now we have this space right here as our stairwell um, so i'm labeling it as open to below but we won't see that room label um, i'm sorry you can't see my dialog boxes it's just a glitch in the streaming software but anywho so that is my staircase now it's not quite to size we probably want to make sure it's oh yeah that's nothing at least that okay and that's probably pretty good we'll play with that this might okay so now that problem mm -hmm. the one problem with me turning this into a doorway is that they had the staircase coming all the way over here so i might actually undo that i don't know i don't want to but kind of makes the most sense I don't want to make it too small. But see, the reason I'm having a mess with this, or the reason that I'm needing to scoot, so maybe we don't. Yeah. Is that we've got to have our front door. And we want to make the entranceway look fairly symmetrical, interesting balanced even if it's not symmetrical it definitely needs to look balanced so maybe what we'll do is instead of a door with a window on each side maybe we'll scooch this door over this way a little bit and just do windows to kind of balance something like that because this the length of that will be determined by you know how many steps we have to go down to the basement and it is a nine foot basement ceiling so okay so now what that leaves us with here is we've got to figure out our sizes for kitchen, dining, great room. So I think right about there maybe is where they figured the divider. You know, and these are imaginary. Okay. So this is our great room living room we can delete that dimension line and then over here we have our kitchen and dining space and at least on what the client has sent me there's no real framing around the dining space in fact the door to the mudroom actually comes in from the garage through the mudroom and into this dining space not a huge fan of that um generally i would move the kitchen back there and have the dining there but i can kind of see where they're going with this in wanting the kitchen on that back wall where the views are so i think we can still do it we're just gonna i'm gonna just gonna change where the door is because right now they've got the door coming right smack in the middle of the room i'm gonna make sure the door is over here to the side and again making sure this is a 36 inch 
door. Same here. Now, as you can see, those just about touch. So that is not the ideal size for this room. Um, I think we might have to, like I said, I like to keep my exterior dimensions at two, but sometimes it makes sense to go to one. Um, I'm going to think on this one for a minute. I'm not going to change that yet. I might end up pushing that garage further out because right now we're actually, we've got some space to work with. Right now we're at 1645. So maybe it does make sense that we do that because we could add a couple feet there. The master bedroom doesn't really need much more, but this mudroom really does need a little bit more so maybe maybe that's where i'll break my rule and add an extra couple feet or maybe we just add one foot to this room and a foot to the garage okay so yeah that makes that a little bit nicer now in their plan they actually also had a little bump out which um you know a lot of people seem to think that washers and dryers are just these 30 inch square boxes but with modern washers and dryers a lot of them are quite a bit deeper than that um and so this plan actually has a little extra depth built in here for it, which is kind of nice. Um, and I can see where that would, what this does is two things. Um, by bumping it out, you get the extra little depth for the washer and dryer. So you're not feeling quite so crowded in this mudroom space because this is not only laundry, but it's also the main access from the garage. What that also does is it allows for this door to be slightly hidden. So it's not just a door on the wall of the dining room. It's just slightly around the corner. And depending on how we position this front room here, and maybe we scooch this door over a little ways, um, that gives you a little bit of space for say like a little table behind the door, um, something like that, just to make the dining room feel, I don't know, nicer. I move that over to you. Now that's an imaginary, or well, an invisible wall, not an imaginary wall. Um, so that doesn't matter quite so much, but anyway. Okay, so let's label this as our laundry slash mud. Mud rooms seem to be kind of a Northern and Western thing. Um, I don't see them a lot in like Southern house plans. Which seems weird to me because visiting family in Texas and being on the beach, I think you need just as much space to get the sand off you as you do the mud. But oh well. Okay. And then okay, so this is our kitchen dining. Kitchen slash dining. So let's find It's easy when you can type. 
see how much bigger that one is? Front load dryer. Front load washer. GFW. Okay, there we go. Something like that. Oh, see, that's a bigger, that's a shot, a deeper one. So, like, I try to show things realistically. You know, just because I could show a 30 inch washer and dryer doesn't mean that's what you're going to purchase. So, we might as well show the plans, you know, showing what people are actually going to go to the store and buy. Give yourself a couple inches of wiggle room. There. Okay. And then we want to do. Um, little single basin laundry sink over here and then space for a bench Just moving that up so it's easier to read okay so there we go we've got space for bench and coat hooks we've got that single basin sink we've got our washer and dryer and we will obviously want a window in there because of course you want window in there all right we're gonna want windows up in front we're gonna want windows in back definitely want some big sliders on this back wall I think that's a five foot. I want a six foot. Um, we want a patio door here out of the bedroom, which is why I haven't shrunk that dimension much. Yeah, because that's, that's really pushing it to get that door in there. You know, if we're really hurting for square footage, we could drop that to five foot, but um, I don't know that we need to. If anything, because this is all one big covered porch back here, we could do a bump out on this kitchen dining space to get a little extra space there without affecting the roof line and that might be a better use of space so because right now we're still looking at we're at 1671 so we're still not hurting um we're still doing pretty good but that might i i might consider doing that coming out maybe a foot or so there we'll see and actually even though they Generally, you would put the door on the side kind of like that, but we could maybe make it work where it goes out the back because, actually, I'm going to do that. I think that might look better. Anywho, um, because the, the deck that's on the back is going to be wrapped around and extended out beyond that room. So let's do, let's just do a big giant slider. And that'll take advantage of the windows, you know, the view, the everything. Um, and then I'm going to do this. So then that does solve kind of my problem here a little bit. And that obviously is not an invisible wall there. We don't want that to be an invisible wall. So let's delete. Exterior wall. And then I just need to figure out what my dimension is there. Holy crap, 14 on the nose. Yay. All right, we'll figure out all the window dimensions and everything later. For right now, I'm just going to delete a couple of those because they're in my way. Blah, blah, blah. We'll fix that at the end. Okay. 
but I do think we needed that extra space there in the kitchen. And we could either go, we could go two or we could even go four feet. Um, I just think we need that extra space. This is going to get kind of crowded otherwise. So client wants a corner pantry here in the kitchen. Something like that. There we go. And I can delete. Um, corner pantries are weird. Like they can have a lot of space, but they can be deceptively big and small. It's kind of weird. You, in order to get the right dimensions to have a door on the front, they can get tricky. So, um, just something to be aware of. Cause see how here you would think, oh, I'll just have it be two feet deep. Well, no, not really. Okay. So interior dimensions, let's. That's three foot nine, that's four foot four. I'm going to come on over here because we need our, this front face to be big enough to have a door on it. And right now that's not even a two foot door, which means that the four foot four is probably pretty close, but this three foot nine is not. So we need to move this over, let's say four foot just for now. And then let's, well, we'll say four foot two and then we'll do this one at four foot two okay so then that allows us let me get see if i can get this to a 24 inch door nope still not at a 24 inch door so let's do a couple more inches and there might be math that would allow me to do this quicker but see now that, okay. So I was able to get a 24 inch door. There we go, four foot three. So that is my measurement for that corner pantry in order to get a two foot door on the front. Okay. So now if we're looking at our kitchen, what do we think is going to make the most sense? Um, most people like having the sink on the back wall because that allows for looking out the window and seeing the view. Um, and then if you're coming in here from the garage, if this is your main entrance here with groceries, you want to come on in, you want to be able to drop off your stuff, say with the fridge and pantry, then have your sink for cleaning, and then maybe your stove for cooking. Now the client hasn't told me whether they want this cooktop on an island or on the wall. So for right now, I'm gonna put it on the wall. In general, I much prefer um, islands to be workspaces and not have a sink or a stove or anything on them. Um, occasionally like a little veggie wash sink is fine, but more often than not, especially if you're having bar stools and stuff, having it be just a big giant workspace with storage underneath is usually a better option for people. Okay, so start to throw some cabinets in here. We need the kitchen sink one to be... So we might not be able to get the range on this back wall with that corner pantry. So we might end up having to put the range over there. And then the fridge... I hate to put the fridge so far away, but it might make the most sense. So. Okay. And I do, I also hate floating fridges. So even if I had put the fridge over on this wall, I probably would have flanked it with a full height pantry cabinet. Um, Cause even just those, end caps just feel unfinished to me. Um, and I don't like the feeling of a fridge that's just floating out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so now we need a double. Sink, we need a dishwasher. We 
we need a range. For now, I'll show it as an electric range. Um, and the client can say, no, we need that gas. So that's okay. Um, so then for the island, One, two, that gets really far over. Let's try right about here. So I'm doing a five foot by four foot island, I think, at least for what I'm showing here. Okay. So let's see how that looks here in the space. And then we'll get out our tape measure. Okay, so cabinet to cabinet. We've got four foot over here. Make that an even four foot, not that half an inch. And then three foot nine back there. Got plenty of clearance for your doorway for the pantry. You've even got clearance here on this end. So if someone's opening that door, that's fine. I like having that extra clearance back here. Dishwasher doesn't really bother me much there. So I think that's good. And I like having this slightly offset where the island is in just a little ways. Um, and then we need... Excuse me. And five foot is not a huge island if you're thinking of it as a primary seating source. But for having a table over here, could work. So I'll leave that for now. The client can always come back and say, no, we need more space. You know, maybe we do end up pushing this out another couple feet. Um, in which case I'll rethink that fridge location because in a corner like that where you can swing the doors open, it works. But as soon as you get into a situation where you're wedged in and that wall continues and you have to open that door, it becomes too crowded. Okay, so now the whole point of having this here is a window. And then we'll do some upper cabinets. And this one needs to be 24 inches deep to accommodate the fridge. We'll do just a little 12 inch or 9 inch, I guess. No, it's a 12 inch. Okay. Just a little smaller. And then over here, we'll just have a nice symmetrical... There we go. And then we need to do um, that can type right. So then if we were to take a look at this kitchen, 
obviously. There we go. Okay. So, uh, nine foot ceilings, I would recommend cabinets going up to that nine foot. Client can pick appliances. We can do table legs on that island. We can not. It just kind of depends. We could, I don't know. I'm rethinking the island being that way. I'm thinking I might want to turn the island. So if we were to do that... we rotate like this first we need to get our dimensions connected to the right spot okay let's do three foot nine four foot so if we do that then we could make this significantly larger. We could make this I don't know why it doesn't want to snap to that, but So there we can easily get three and depending on how much people like each other you can crowd four. Um, the only thing I'm not liking right here is that three foot nine that is not going to work if that's the fridge because if you'll notice even though it's three foot nine to the front of the sink it's quite a bit less to the front of that so that only gives us maybe three feet. So here I am going to change this real quick and I'm going to do a, a, honestly I kind of want to do like four foot three. And I think that works because you've got your proper clearances here. You can easily get around. It's still not going to feel too huge. And yet you're not, you're still within that line of the kitchen that you're not crowding the dining room. So our dining room is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not the best. Maybe let's shorten this up by a couple inches. I'm just turning those from 24 into 18 inch cabinets. Um, and then I will begrudgingly make this just an even four foot. So that gives us nine feet for our dining room instead of only eight. Um, so first of all, this is what that does to the look. It just kind of shrunk it down. We twisted that island around. There we go. And then let's do dining table. So that's not too bad. Um, you know, it gets a little tiny busy right here with bar stools and chairs near each other. Um, but you do have space still to walk. You know, if you if you got those chairs tucked in. And you and obviously with the length, you very obviously could have a longer table than that. Um so this one seats six. You could easily throw a leaf in there and be able to seat eight, maybe even 12 at Christmas. So 
you know, push your bar stools underneath and there you go. And actually I have that as a 24 inch deep overhang. You could shrink that to an 18 inch deep overhang if you were a little concerned. Um, actually, yeah, I think I might. We'll do 18. And so there's what that did. It just, just scooched it over a little bit. The island still feels very appropriately sized for the space. Um, once we have upper cabinets up there, that'll be easy. So let's do real quick wall cabinet. 18 is the width. 18 is the height. And then um, really quick in this, I don't know if anyone will care, but I'm just really quick pulling the crown molding off of the bottom cabinet so that it's a clean transition. You're not going to have that dust catcher halfway up. So you see how that just changed there. Okay. And then I will do the same thing over here. So I will copy paste. Delete. Paste. Now it's facing the right way. Pulling off the crown here. Why is that one looking wonky? <laughs> now it's crowding the window. There we go. And again, it's kind of a little, little monotonous to pull these crowns off, but if the client sees it in 3D, you want it to look good. And again, I've got to double this to um, 24 inches deep. Okay. Now the one thing I'm not going to mess with here, why is that? Is um the direction of the door swings. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to make this a taller window. I need to be better at doing this when I'm working on when you have the 9 inch or 9 foot ceilings, you don't want your windows to stop less than 7 feet. You want your windows to go up to um 92 instead of the standard 80. But that also means your windows need to be taller. So my height I think that looks better. And I think this there we go. Yeah. So I need to make sure to go around the main floor and adjust those windows. Um, so um, 32, I'm gonna copy that window. That one I might make just a little narrower. I mean, like that one. A 
little smaller. Um, copy and pasting that one from the bathroom. And then Going around to the master and just adding in a ton of windows there because we want lots of light. There will also be an exterior door here. And probably, hush, you're just as bad as the kids. And probably just to keep it looking good, maybe a couple windows on that side. We'll fine tune the dimensions on those here a little bit later. All right. So we've, we've actually got quite a bit done. Um, we've got the two bedrooms, we've got the bath, we've got the kitchen dining, laundry mud, and really all that's left is this master suite. So hang on one second. I'm going to let Miss Edna out of the room. Miss Edna is our super sweet rescue dog who's so smart in a lot of ways and a little bit dumb in a lot of ways too. So the door was not latched, but she's never figured out that you can nose a door open, which maybe is a good thing because then she doesn't try to nose in where she's not uh, wanted at the moment. All right, I'm going to quick hit the save button because I always forget to do that. Okay, so now master bedroom, pretty decent size. Um... And they really don't have anything in here as far as how they want to access that. My personal preference, I, if, if at all possible, I like to do some kind of a little ante room, kind of like I did on the other side or like I wanted to do on the other side, just to have those doors to bathrooms and private places, not right smack in the middle of a public zone. Um, so we'll see what we're going to do here. We might, I might end up carving out a little ante room or if the client insists, that but in all honesty I well just think about it if you don't want to be sitting at your dining room table and see the fact that you left your bed unmade or um whatever you know so and it doesn't take up that much extra floor space typically to turn a corner so we've got that and then there will be a door into this master bath area uh, closet is accessed from within that master bath. So let's throw a few interior walls in here. Um, and we might even do like a little angle wall here. Something like that. All right. So really basic. That's what we've got. Um, we're going to copy this toilet. Code says we can go that small. I'm going to do a pocket door instead of a hinge door because it should be. Okay. Um, like I said, most of the doors in this house are the three foot interior doors um, on that one toilet enclosure, since we're not doing a true ADA and yet they still want the enclosure. Um, I'm going to leave that as a two foot six unless they come back and ask me to change that again. We'll play with that. Okay. So now over here need a hmm. 
So I'm just digging through trying my library trying to find a good shower pan. Problem with having a big library is that you've got too many things to scroll through when all you want is something that just is a rectangle. I just found one the other day. I don't need a tub shower. I don't need all the valves. Ah, there we go. Square. Rectangular. No threshold. Okay. So we are three foot by... Should be six foot or five foot? Six foot. Okay, so that's three foot by six foot. And then we want bathtub. All right. Okay. Um, people always ask, so I'm going to do three or. 36 inch by 72 inch shower. And So this is 38 by 74. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that. This bathroom is really wide. So I'm actually thinking, I don't want to steal too much space, but we definitely could give some space because we do not need a nine foot vanity. We could definitely steal some space and give it to this mud room. There we go. So then you actually have some extra storage space so we can do Actually, let's just even do it like that. Let's do like a broom closet.
And then So let's do 12 inches, 24 inches. One, two, three, four. Actually, we're at six right now. Okay, so just fine tuning a few dimensions. Um, there we go. So that is a one, two, three, four, five, six foot nine vanity. So you've got drawers on either side, a little drawers unit in the middle. Okay, and then we've got our toilet enclosure, which is awesome. And then our closet. So closets, if you've ever watched me do these, back to type. Um, so there's a template that allows us to do the closet shelf like this. And you just drag and drop, you throw it down. But the thing to keep in mind is Um, you want to be aware of how much space you actually have. So you look at a closet like this and you think, oh, I've got all this space. The caveat is that is only like you see in this lower corner, the shelf and the rod that comes out one foot from the wall. Um, so that is what's actually attached to your structure, to your house. Um, so what I always do is I come in here real quick throw in a few CAD lines that are just shy of two feet. Um, and this is indicating the hanger. Um, so you're gonna obviously have hangers on the rods. Well, that right there eats a foot into your walking space or whatever you would think you still have. So I'll copy this around the room a few times, rotate it appropriately. There we go. So now, while still being, you know, a good sized closet, you can see a little more accurately what your actual walking space is. You know, you walk in and you've got about, like I said, each of these squares is a foot. So you've got about three feet from shoulder here to shoulder over there, which is comfortable. Um, I'm noticing I don't like that. Hold on. No, let's go back the other way. Um, because if this door were to open all the way. Okay. 
So we'll have to shorten this one up a little bit. You know, and maybe behind the door, um, the homeowner would decide to do just built-in shelves and not actually do hangers like that. Um, but either way, we're, we're kind of covered there. Um, and the, the client will go back in, the, the contractor will go back in, and they'll decide, you know, hey, we want to do a closet system from Closet Made or from the local cabinet shop or whatever. And they'll work out the details of exactly what this ends up looking like with double hung versus um, full length. Uh, any kinds of shelving or drawer units, um, hampers, you know, so this could be a very good spot right over here to do a, like a, maybe a hamper down at the bottom and then some shelves up above, but at least this gives them an idea. So we'll tap on that, call it closet, and then move the label up to where you can actually read it. Okay. And then this is master bath. I get that a label and it always wants to drop down to the bottom it's silly and I'm going to yeah because the whole point of a room label like that is that you want to be able to read it you want to be able to see what you've got and then that door should scooch over like that because you want to have plenty of clearance we don't want to feel crowded there I think we did pretty good so, um, and that one's labeled as a broom closet because it is not a full two foot one deep. So you would not be able to put, um, hangers in there. You can see just even by looking right over here, how that wouldn't work. Um, but it's a perfect spot for your vacuum cleaner, your broom and mop and all of that. And just extra storage. You can do shelves up above and open space below, whatever. Um, and then this is kind of the informal you know, we'll hang up some coat hooks along the wall. Um, maybe over here, the client will want, say, an upper cabinet and then a rod for hanging stuff. Um, you can also let in. So we'll do that. And then we'll throw this closet piece in here. We want to make sure it's high enough so okay so now if we were to come look at that laundry room i'd say that looks pretty good so we've got that nice little window you've got some natural light coming in you've got a cabinet up above so you can put your soap um again you know maybe the client will want to put some cabinetry up there just have a shelf that runs across the top but And then you've got that and the door that goes into your garage. And then back here, this is where you'd have your bench and space for coat hooks. Okay, so let's zoom on out first. Let's save. Right now we are at 1699 square foot. So if the client said 1600 to 1800, I landed right at 17. <laughs> Yay, I fit the bill. All right. Um, you know, and even if the client did want to come out here and maybe expand this a little bit, we're looking at, see, that's 14 feet wide. You could bump this out two feet and only add 30 square feet. I might recommend that. Um, again, if we did that, I would probably move the fridge. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, if we went two feet further out, I would totally put the fridge over there. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to leave this. The client might decide they are okay with that. No, I'm not. I hate that. Sorry. Okay, and I made sure that the doorway is 42 inches. Um, they want their interior doors to be the three foot, but then since you're doing this 90 degree corner, uh, you still want there to be lots of ease of traffic, I guess. So it breaks it up a tiny bit. The client could decide they hate it. We'll just put the door back. 
not a big deal, but I just want to show them that it is possible. Um, more than likely, I envision like a king bed over on this wall. They could put a small little dresser or a chair right here in this corner. Probably a TV on this wall somewhere. Probably a dresser over here and then maybe a chair or two by the door. So, all right. So I'm going to real quick, now that I've got this main floor, hit save. Okay. I'm just reading through the notes that the client sent me. 16 to 1800 square feet on the main floor. Yes. Built-in corner pantry. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll deal with the roof later. I'm not going to mess with the roof quite yet, but I can totally do the ridge lines where he wants them right now. Center of the vault, master bedroom on the deck, center of the vault, love a set of French doors. I've got it drawn as a slider. Client could change it to French if you want. Um, okay, lock-in closet. Now, he said the staircase could be wherever I want. It actually kind of works there, so we'll leave that for now. Um, we've got the garage doors correct, a couple windows. Daylight basement with an exercise room, two bedrooms, a mechanical, and a family room. So now that we've got our main floor figured out, really quick, I'm going to go around. I'm going to quick hit up my exterior dimension tool, which goes crazy. But really, all I'm trying to do is just make sure that my windows look moderately decent. Like, you know, the spacing and stuff. Um, so I'm going to do, let's do 3.9. That up. And that is not centered within the room, so let's make that okay. Okay, that's close. Okay. And then that one's centered over the sink, so we want to leave that. Okay, those are centered. And that's pretty close. We know our garage doors are on center because that's where we started. Um, we'll do four foot. Because then that gives you space. Like I said, you could do like a little table here, maybe a little bench or something there. We'll have to figure out the length of that staircase. So for right now, we'll leave that. Um, there we go. So now we've got some nice symmetry here on the front with the door and some windows. And then what do we come up with there? Four foot three. So I'm pull it apart. Okay. And that gets us pretty close there. Yeah, like better closer to the tub. So that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to go back around here real quick and just delete all those window dimension lines because at this point in the design phase, um, that's not as important. Uh, it, I like it to look right, but the client doesn't need to see 27 different dimensions there. Um, and I'm just cleaning that up a tiny bit. Um, proper 
dimensioning calls for the the tinier dimensions, the more broken up dimensions closer to the building, and then the biggest overall dimensions further away from the house. Um, so for example, like right here, that should actually be lined up with that. And this should really be this dimension. Because you want that overall box of how big is this. Uh, I'm going to move that down just a little ways. I'm going to leave that just because that's easier to read than the door size. And so it confirms that I've got a 16 foot door and a 10 foot door. Um, and then this is the only kind of weird spot. Um, because when you have these insets, it's a little tricky sometimes to mention these we are missing okay well first of all I don't care about that closet over right there and then we're missing one which is from this corner to this corner Got it. So we know what kind of all of those are. Um, the closet just doesn't really matter. We'll... There we go. So our perimeter looks good. Everything's nice and even. Everything's called out. Yay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit save. Um, oh, man, how long has it been? I don't even know. That's okay. I'm having fun. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half. Alrighty, well, we're going to keep going because um, I got to get this done today or at least get this first draft. So first floor. Yay. Um, I do not have a roof on it. I generally like to wait. Um, I know what the client kind of wants for the roof. I've got a picture. Um, we're going to do a covered porch. It's going to extend on the back. I, I am going to quick draw that though. So let's real quick actually move a few of these dimensions out just a little ways. And kind of the same thing here. I'm going to move there. Because we need to do a covered porch, which basically runs Let's say we'll do about four foot. And we will label it so that when I go to do the roof, it knows that it's a covered porch. Um, That's right up to there. And that's right up to there. All right. And then the only other big thing, and the client will have to tell me where this is, if <coughs> if this if if these French doors here, the the sliding doors here in the great room are actually the primary entrance for the house, um, where in fact the stairs uh to access this porch are going to be. Um and then again, we've got a covered porch out in front here. Okay, so we need to show at least a couple steps here. We're going to make that a six foot wide staircase. And I centered it. And then we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to have it kind of right out from this great room. 
And again, I'm going to make it six foot wide. And this is just for illustration. The client's going to have to come back and say, yes, that's where we want the stairs. No, it's not. Um, you know, maybe they need them on the side. They, they said there's a, a down slope to the lot. So it is going to be a daylight basement. Um, basement. So the front door actually faces the back of the property. The back of the house faces the front. Daylight basement, but it doesn't tell me which direction the daylight is coming. So I'm going to make a note here real quick. Um, yeah. That. Okay. But that at least gives us a real good idea of what we're what we're looking at. I could do some symmetry. Okay. Anyway, so save. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a floor, but we're building the basement floor. So we're gonna build the foundation. Now there's a window that pops up and it's asking me about all my heights and everything. Um my stem walls, my ceiling, all of that. We're doing a nine foot ceiling down in the basement. Um So actually, okay, we're doing that, walls with footings, and then, uh, got it. And then it's asking me if I want to drive the new foundation plan from the first floor. Yes. So now I've got my footprint. Um, it already maps out where the garage is, because that's a slab. You can't put anything underneath the garage without major engineering um and then here's where we've got the rest of the house now the first thing we want to do real quick um under tools reference display now we can see all of our walls up above so the first thing we want to do is we do a railing or a wall let's do a wall interior wall and we want to line this up with what's above. Now, the one thing I didn't do. Okay, so in a basement, what it shows me now is the foundation wall. That is an unfinished. That dotted line is where the finished sheetrock framed wall would be. Now, if I go upstairs, I'm going to turn off my reference display. And did that change? It does say open to below. Okay. So maybe it's not sure. So let me quick throw this up here. If I go up, there you can see my stairs. So that's where that open to the below thing works. But what I need to do, so I had to add that layer of drywall. to show that that's a finished wall. I want my staircase to come up over to that. Um, and again, we don't want anything in this house to be narrow, so I'm gonna make sure that my staircase is not 39, but 42 inches wide. I'm gonna pull this on over like this. Now I had to make that um, 43, but that's because uh, the interior dimension is not including framing. Okay, so let's pull this up like that. So if we go upstairs, you'll see open to below. And now down here at the bottom, I've got my align with wall above below tool that makes sure that I'm properly aligned. But you can see this gap right here. That is where there'll be a ledge going down um, at the point of that foundation where we have to do a little jog but that looks kind of cool all right and then here this piece right here is flexible to a point we need to figure out 
um, what our ceiling height is. So here you can see we've got a nine foot ceiling basement. Okay, nine foot. Now we can move this over to give ourselves more space in that entryway as long as we still have six foot eight of clearance. So we can go over about that far. So we can come over about two treads worth if we wanted to. So let's do that. So I'm going to go one tread, two tread. So now you see seven foot one to the underside of that floor joist. So some people don't want um, to have that jog. They want it to be as open as possible. Other people want as much floor space up here as possible. I'm thinking that might be a little crowded feeling. So I'm going to come over just a little bit there. And we're going to go down to this tread, which is seven foot eight. And that's not too bad. You know, that's just shy of eight foot. But honestly, even moving it over here, let's do that isn't bad either. Here we have. So there we have eight foot four. So we're going right there to that tread. Um, I think that actually works pretty well. And it also keeps the symmetry with the windows looking nice. It you've got plenty of space here. I say go for it. Um, I don't see any reason to to not have it go all the way over. Okay. And then just to verify. So yeah, so 14, eight ish. That's our great room by 18. So that's what our dimensions are. Our dimensions aren't really counting this little entry there. Okay. So then as you look this way, what that looks like, Can kind of see those but it's not huge part of me wishes this was more of like a framed doorway and I think actually you know what I think I might like to do that I don't know I so let's see what we can do here if we were to do the doorway We obviously need it to come way over here to that. That's what that does. So it kind of closes it off. It makes that corner a little more private. Um, uh, I'm torn. Like I like that it kind of makes it a little more private. I don't like, let's make it, um, Instead of an 80 inch tall doorway, let's make it a 92 so it matches the windows. Not 82, 92. There we go. So now it at least matches the window. So it, it still creates this sense that you're entering a private space, but it doesn't, but then but the, the, the lines kind of match up nicer. So I think we'll do with that. Okay. Yay! So then I'll go down. Does this, oops, hold on. And then does that still align with above? Okay. And then this should be right to the top edge of, no, no, right there. There we go. So then if we go up, that's where that starts. Perfect. All right, so we'll close that. Nice. And then we've got just a little hall there. Like that. Okay, so now if we go down to the downstairs, I said the client wanted um, an exercise room, two bedrooms, mechanical, and family. 
So the easiest way generally to do bedrooms um, in a basement, and especially if you're going to include a bath uh, or any plumbing of any kind, is to simply mirror what's up above. So if we turn on our reference display, we can see what we've got going on up here. Now the dimensions in the basement are always just a tiny bit different because of that drywall bit, um, you know, in order to have a finished space. So we'll come over here and then I'm going to, I've not figured out a workaround on this, but So I'm just going to drag this out to the perimeter, drag that. So again, we've got just kind of a little, little extra space there, but that's okay. Um, so we're basically copying what's up above. It's not a exact, but it's pretty close. Although in the places where I do want it to be exact, I can use that little tool there. And that's the one spot where it can't be exactly the same. So I might, this hallway might end up being a little narrower. Or down here, actually, let's do this. Nope, not that one. Down here, we'll put the closet on this wall. Okay, so then the easiest thing to do again, copy and paste. So copy, go down a floor, paste. Okay. I say I don't really need the um, reference display at the moment. So I'll turn that off so it's easier to see. We matched that one up so we know that's right. There are a little linen shelf back here. Actually, I'm going to move. Oh, no. So we're just, like I said, copying and pasting um, until we get this the way we want. Uh, 
wrong. Because anytime you can stack plumbing lines, you're saving money. Okay. So, real quick, label bath. So, upstairs we have master, bedroom two, and bedroom three. Downstairs, this will be bedroom four. And this will be bedroom five. Just so that then as you're communicating, if you're talking, you know, via email or on the phone, um, it's really easy to identify exactly where we're talking without having to plan. Okay, gotta make sure our closet's deep enough. And I'm gonna change these to four foot by folds. We do a little bit less space on this side. Okay, so that means our window will have to be here in the front and in the back for symmetry. Um, okay, so we said that, and then we said workout room and family room and mechanical. Two bedrooms, mechanical, family. So there's lots of space. Oh, we need to make a doorway here. Okay, so that creates that little hall back into there. So I'm thinking this slightly smaller space over here would be the workout room this back here would be the family room and then the mechanical would be the space kind of button up to the garage so again i've got to do my interior walls so i'll come over jog jog yeah the only jogging i do is with my walls not with actual jogging okay and so then this Come on over like that. So. And this is just showing that it's a finished basement. Um, if it was going to be an unfinished basement to be done for later, we'd leave that step off. Okay. And then I don't know if they want, you know, the exercise space to be open and maybe like the, I'm thinking probably close off the exercise space a little bit and then have the family room be the open space. Um, so I'm thinking, well, maybe do something like this. Find that so we've got a hallway um so i'll make a quick little note here wall or open rail um having it be open would definitely feel nicer as you're coming down you won't feel like you're as closed off we still do have a nice almost four foot wide hallway which is awesome um but you never know and then let's make this a six foot double door. And then we'll label this one. as the exercise room. And then I'm going to do kind of like a doorway here. Um, and again, I want it to be the tall doorway, the 92 inch. So it doesn't feel closed off. Again, I should do the same thing down here.
and then this becomes family room. And this is mechanical utility storage. And we'll need a door into there. Three foot. Oops, no. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the exercise room isn't huge, but everyone has different preferences on how, you know, what, what exactly do they mean by exercise room? How, what kind of equipment do they want? How do they want it laid out? I mean, do they just have like a Peloton and a yoga mat? Do they have bigger equipment? Do they want to do like a dance studio? My parents did a little ballet studio in the basement for my sister when she was younger. Um, so those are some things that we'll have to work out, but at least for a first draft, especially when the only guidance I'm given is, you know, these are the three rooms you want down here. Um, this will be nice. So now you can see how, see how that doorway down there is nice and wide open. Um, it's not as low as this, the door heights. And then because of, so daylight basement, if that's correct, then we've got some really cool options for some maybe sliding doors down here. So let's do maybe something like that. And then I'm going to copy this window. So that's that one that we liked height wise. And then maybe we'll do a few extra over here. Maybe a few here. And then it just depends on the grade of the yard, the slope, all of those things, as far as what else we end up doing. So I'm going to real quick again. Hmm. Try to get my windows kind of positioned so So anyway, sorry, I'm kind of being boring here, but all right, I think that'll look pretty decent. And then we will um, clean this all up on the exterior views here in a little bit. So. There we go. So there's our basement. But with nine foot ceilings and big giant doors. Um, okay, we do want our sliders to be glass, a glass panel, sorry. So let's, but yeah, I mean, you've got a nice big space down here. Let's actually make the doors for this workout room. Let's make those glass panel. 
So you can see into that workout space. Okay, so that is glass panel. That was weird that that one showed up now. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and then, so if I'm asking about open rail below, then here I should ask about... Um, railing or half wall. Again, some of these are little details that they can figure out later, but the more information you can give to your contractor at the beginning, the better, because railings cost differently than half walls. Railings look differently. You have to figure materials. You know, there's a lot of different details like that that you just want to know somewhat early on in the process because, yeah, the sooner you have real numbers, the better. So 1692 up there. Now that's saying 1755. That's actually saying I have more space down to. Oh, I know why. Um, because this is a quirk. Um, on these staircases, when it says open to below, it's not actually floor. Um, so the default is to exclude that, but I want to include that in my total living calculation. So, okay, I've just done that in the dialog box. So that puts me up to 1750 on the main floor. 1755 downstairs. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but that's okay. We at least know we're within range. So that is good. And then utility storage, I mean, technically it is considered um, part of the house is unfinished, but it is considered part of the conditioned part of the house. So it has the, the AC and the heat and stuff running to it, unlike the garage. Now this over here is a slab. So garage slab. Okay. That's pretty much it. All right. So what I'll do, I'm going to save, of course. So now what I need to do, um, in order to send this over to my client to have them kind of give me the okay, now I need to do what's called a layout. So um, I have a template that I use, it's my ArchD template. Yes. And then I immediately save as the client name. <laughs> there we go. Can't type um, layout. Sorry. Okay, and I'm in the right folder and I'm saving it. So then what I would do, um, I would zoom in, I'd take care of client name. This is my template page. Uh, generally, then I skip over to page six. Six is the first floor plan. Five is the plot plan. We don't have that yet. So six is the first floor plan. So um, go up here to the main floor, file, send to layout. The default is quarter inch. So yay, it fits. Um, this is where if I needed to start making some tweaks with, you know, adjusting dimension lines so it all fits on the page, that's when I would do this. And actually, I do see I've got a bit of a gap over here. Um, so I am going to scoot this just a little closer in. So I'm not taking up the whole page with dimensions and blank space. Okay. So did that. Because I want to make sure I have enough space for... Um, my title bar and everything. And then I generally kind of try to align somewhat to the left because then that gives me space on the right for notes. So then I'll use my marker. Okay. 
And then on the uh, layouts, I always switch to caps lock. Um, now, quite often people will use the, the text below the line to call out, say, the, the square footage. But I'm actually going to leave that right here. So I'm not going to bother calling it out. The other thing that people use on that line often is they'll use that for scale, um, which when I get over to elevations, I will. But I have a default scale on my title bar that says quarter inch unless otherwise noted. Um, so that gets me my main floor. Now we'll go to the next page, which is second floor plan. Nope. Third. Nope. Roof. Nope. Foundation. All right. So now we'll come over here. We'll drop down to the basement. Again, default quarter inch. The one thing between switching, switching between plan view and layout view is you got to remember what tool you're using. Cause it'll, it, it doesn't stay the same. If you're using one thing in layout, but you're using something different in plan. Yeah. Anyway, you don't care. All right. Maybe you do. And then here we'll do, um, basement plan. Now, one thing that's not on this foundation plan, um, and again, this is preliminary. Um, once this gets sent over to the roof and trust engineer, they'll look at it and they'll say, oh, we need a, um, a thickened footing or a, a foundation or a pier wall or something. And they'll come back and they'll say, hey, would you go and draw this in? Obviously, yes, because that's the stuff that needs to go into that foundation plan. But at this phase in the design, I'm not the engineer. I don't know those things. I just wait for them to tell me. I'm going to guess, looking at this house, that maybe under this utility thing, maybe there'd be one, or maybe under this wall. But again, not being an engineer, I'm not going to step up and say that. Um, or again, coming kind of maybe down from this one. So I'll add that in later. But this gets me where I need to go now. Okay, so that foundation roof. And that's pretty much, okay, so those are the two big things. So then I'm going to skip ahead to 30 in my layer set. Um, because then we start to get into the bank, the blank pages. Um, I don't have templates set up for a lot of the other stuff. So go back up to the main floor. Not that it really matters right now. Um, and then because I don't have a roof, this is going to look a little weird. But I am going to real quick do a series of elevations. So see. Okay. File, send to layout. Um, elevations on the exterior, I also leave a quarter inch. And again, remember what tool you're in. Okay, and then from the rear. And I'm going to leave some space because I think we're going to want to sketch on this and, you know, figure out. I know I, I have a pretty good idea of what the roof line is going to look like, but um, then we're going to go to 31. Do the left elevation. And over here, we're going to do the right elevation. Okay, so I'll go back a page. So now I've got my labels on all of those. Again, I know the roof's not on there. We'll get to that. Not today, but it's not worth putting the roof on until the client okays the plan. Um, and then really the only other thing that I would put in this on these plans is generally what I do is I go in and I'll do um, an elevation of each of the areas that require cabinetry. So the kitchen, the laundry, the bathrooms. Um, 
being that this is pretty preliminary, I'm not going to do that today. Um, this is still, like I said, a very first draft and I want the client to review it. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I am um, not for my layer set, but for the client to see, I am going to do just a couple 3D views. Um, so I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to do, say, from the front door. Now, I don't like that white bridge, so I'm going to change that. Same with my stove and my microwave. Okay. Um, that's the wood we've got. Then I want my table to match and my chairs to match. There we go. Um, oh, I want this doorway to be the 92 inches tall because I don't want it to feel crowded. Okay. So from the front door, ish, yeah, we'll say like that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do a screenshot um, and I have a snip tool on my computer, so. And then I'm just gonna save. Okay, then I want to do, what's another good one? So kind of from the front door, maybe looking this way. Now this is going to be vaulted, so that's a little confusing in this image, but still share it. Okay, um, should probably do one standing in the kitchen looking this direction. Okay. And then let's see what else. We might not be able to get a good angle here, but we can try. Yeah, that's kind of weird. And most likely there'll be some details here with maybe like the wall goes up halfway and then it's glass or however you want to do that. So I won't bother showing that one. I do kind of want to show this. I think I, this one kind of was cool. Okay. All right. So I've got four interior screenshots. I've got um, my layout set that has kind of my exterior elevations. I don't know if I want to show them the exterior elevations right now. I think I might skip on that because again we'll you know we'll need to just double check all the windows line up um decide you know i would probably do transom windows up above here or make those doors taller um instead of the standard six eight perhaps it's one of the things you got to think about with that that nine foot ceiling you know you can see here down here how the windows look nice and proportionate but then you come over here to this door and it, it's shorter because you've got a nine foot ceiling. So you want your windows to be up tall. You either have to put a transom up there. You have to make your doors taller. It just, it, it feels too small if you don't 
make use of that space. And then if we go back here, we've got our main floor plan and our basement plan. Now, really quick, what I like to do is um, I'll just do a little thing called plan notes. And unfortunately, you can't see this pop up here. Um, okay, so nine foot, sorry, nine foot ceiling height on main floor. Nine foot ceiling height in basement. Um, and the garage actually has a 10 foot. Okay. Um, well, I don't need to call it the fact that it's a daylight basement because the location of the windows and doors will pretty much verify that we don't have the plot plan um okay deck okay porch because i labeled porch on the plan so porch sizes are approximate And I'm going to make sure it says covered porch. Covered porch sizes are approximate. Um, um, I won't, I'll do a window and door schedule real quick before I go. Um, let's see. Door schedule, um, windows are approximate and style, size, function to be determined with vendor. Uh, cabinets are approximate and for planning only to be determined with vendor. Um, if I have questions about gas versus electric, I'll call those out here. Um, so client to determine if range is gas or electric. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, and then the client will de determine all the exterior materials at a later date. So nothing there. Let me just real quick bullet point this. I apologize. You can't see this when I'm typing it, but. So we'll shrink that down, put a little border around it, and then I'm going to skip over to page 32. On the plan here, I'm going to go up to the attic level. Um, now I know you can't, there's nothing up here at the moment. Um, eventually the roof plan will be up here. So tools, schedules, door schedule. and tools, schedules, window schedule. Well, that's easy, I only use three windows. So, um, actually I wanna move that like that. And then I'm going to send to layout. Now this one I have to shrink down probably to eighth inch in order for it to fit. And even that saying it won't, so hold on. So then the option is to turn it sideways and then give it a quick little caption. Okay. 
window and door schedule. Yeah. And that just calls out, you can't really see it. Um, but for example, I have three different window sizes and types here, but it tells you it's a double hung. It gives you the dimensions. Um, yeah. And then it does the same thing for all of my doors. So if I zoom in here, you can see I've got garage door, interior door, exterior, closet, all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's pretty much it. So then I would just hit um, control print. My dialog box comes up. Um, I don't need all of them. Now one and two, I don't really use. So I'm gonna skip over that. So you can see here, I've well, I guess you can't see. Um, but I've got my layout set. I've got main floor, basement, exterior ones, exterior twos, and then my window and door schedule. So I'm just gonna save this as my PDF. Um, and I always do save, um, I do name, layout, and then the date as my save. Just that's my, that way if I'm looking through my files, I can be like, oh yeah, that was the most recent version. All right, and that's pretty much all I'm doing for today. So, um, yeah, I can send this over to the client. We can get started on kind of some back and forth, making sure, you know, I know that we're within the square footage that was allotted. Um, but now it's time to kind of start tweaking those things and then I'll go back and put the roof on once we get the footprint of the house exactly the way the client wants it because I hate to redo roofs if I don't have to. Um, and this one's not that difficult, but anyway. All right, well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed watching me while I sit here and draft and work for a little while. But um, whether you're, you know, uh, someone who's interested in design, whether you're uh, someone who's interested in Chief Architect as a program, Either way, hopefully I taught you something and hopefully I wasn't boring in the meantime. So please take your time uh, or uh, take a minute, subscribe. Uh, I, I need lunch. I'm, it's getting to be that time. So uh, subscribe, tell your friends, share, and I'd love to have you come on back and check out more videos because I'm sure I'll be streaming when I do some revisions on this plan.